Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast from your host and Pearl Dane, the one, the only master of propaganda, hero of psych defender of the fatherland, off here to a glorious 1v1 on crossroads. In the north, it is lazy then, fighting for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland. Here, rolling out with the 9th Panzer Division with Spearhead, German Mechanized, and Jaeger Infantry. In the south, it is Angreif, and fighting for the British Empire, the Commonwealth. Going toe to toe here with the Germans with the 1st Canadian Infantry Division. Here with Lend Lease Assault featuring mortar teams, assault sections, M10 Achilles tank destroyers, the M4 half track, and straight thing support. And as always, a big hearty thanks to my Patreon supporters. Without them and the help, the propaganda cast would not be possible. So big thanks to every single one of those. Other people can join us from Patreon Patreon. Also, a big thanks to Daniel for donating and supporting the propaganda cast with his money. So big thanks to you, Daniel. Other people can join his example by donating as well via the link in the video description. Finally, if you're going to pre-order Communist 3, you can do so via the link in the comments. Use the code to do 3D, in which case I get a part of that sale. So that's another way to support the propaganda cast and still get Communist 3. And I should have just come and like, share, subscribe. So, gun DMD42 here for Lazy Red versus double section into an assault section here for Ungraven. Go for a mix of more regular infantry backed up by some more start assault infantry with the Sten submachine gun. And you fall in a pretty aggressive push for the Eastern Fuel Pond. That's definitely an interesting opening order here, or capping order there from Lazy Run, which you typically don't see here on Crossroads. So, definitely both players here going for a bit of different. In fact, see, Ungraven is going hard west for the assault section. So, in a way, it seems like Lazy Run is kind of preempted here that Ungraven is going to try and, you know, mess up the Fuel Pond in the west by just going hard east in a way that Ungraven clearly did not anticipate. That's it. There's a flanky arm gun named for 2 there. It's going to need more forces down here to assist the machine gun soon. So we can see already now that Angrab is quickly throwing a range here into Lazy Ren's opening. Definitely not great here for Lazy Ren and could possibly backfire him aggressively loses the MD-42. Meme on the west of the assault section seems they've gotten here as suddenly things get very heated in the east. And there we go. Now they're suddenly moving again here. Second one is going to run. Pioneer's gun is going for the section here. Machine gun setting up here. Closing in on those for Damsel Insel Affen. And there you go. Sending them packing. That was definitely not the usual opening here. In the west, we got the assault section moving about. Grabbed the western fuel pump with their Sten guns. The Sten gun was based off the German MP40 and was basically an attempt to make a cheaper and more easy version to make version of it. In part, you might wonder why that, because the British didn't have any submachine guns before the war, didn't have a program, so they actually ended up just copying German submachine guns. In fact, the first, the Lanchester, was straight up a copy of the German MP28, was it 24? I think something around that. Very early German submachine gun there, which is just straight up copied, and then they later developed the Sten gun. Things get a bit more fun, though, because later on, by the end of the war, the Germans will try and copy the Sten gun with the MP3008 as an even crude and easy to manufacture submachine gun. So, fun facts there. But there you go, Salt Second Gun, gonna use it with the Sten guns, ripping into them. Can also be equipped with a pair of Thompsons. Got the md 42 up, he's gonna catch the Salt Section here. Might lose the gun in the early game, and yes, a full wipe here. On laser end from Ungarden and Salt section there. Very good in the south here. Connies first this section there. Actually, the pioneers get packed off. Another fun fact about the Sten gun. The German troops actually kind of liked it. Despite having some less than great rotation with the British troops, the Germans apparently were fairly fond of it. At least they'd pick it up when they could. The part of that might have to do with also the fact that, you know, there weren't actually enough MP40s to go around is my suspicion. As well there, so you know, the Sten gun was in comparatively larger numbers. I imagine for a bunch of them, you know, it was a pretty handy submachine gun they could get their hands on. Another reason was the magazine went up to the side, meaning you know, they could fire from a prone position, which is definitely something they also like. But, you know, it's a little fun note there. In fact, somebody had some entire fighting mega units that just, you know, walk around with the Sten guns they captured from the British. Like to make a nice company of laser Ren. No replacement for the Gundies right away. Probably going to be seeing... Oh, he doesn't have any fuel for the armored car. So, laser Ren's opening here is actually looking pretty precarious. Here's Ungarn is just pouring in pressure here. Also bolstering up the sections. Got the Thompson ready for the assault section. Like to make a nice company almost done. We got another Gundies squad here from laser Ren. Though adding some Panzer Gundies, I think it'll be a good addition. Almost got with some fuel pump, but again, the car pump seat is a laser end. These early opening didn't quite pan out the way it hoped. We also got some mines here from Ungraven with the sappers. Very good. Medics there for Ungraven as well. Got the gunners catching the section out. And Pioneers moving up. They're backed up by more gunners here. So we'll have to see what happens next. Sandbags up here. Pardon me, though, would expect a half track here from... Uh, 
I'm glad this the half check with the court mount is quite popular with Brits to go for Lenley's assault. So I would not be surprised to see that here from there. Go assault take them in great use of the train, get close to the gunners while minimizing incoming fire and damage. But there you go, the M42 team pretty much puts a stop to that pursuit here and even suppresses them. Definitely less great there for Anka of Ivan, but great for Lazy Ren, at least helpful. Gunners pushing straight for the car on there. Assault says to be rushed by the gun. Do you see? No, oh, he's staying a bit of a distance there. Just to be sure. Sapa Chad gun is the other moving eastwards here. Can soon go for the armored car. As for Ungraven, are we seeing like any attempt at the AC? Nope. So again, likely going to be an armored car. He oh, the half tech kick. Ooh, assault gun is the oh, section pushed to fire against the gun. Sapa's charging in for the British Empire. Going straight for the gun is then being pushed back. Almost got the assault section there. And he is falling back there towards the base. And there go more fighting around the coffin between Lacey, Oren, and Ungraven. Got the tutu on the way for him. Like the Pachish B Wagen 200 on 220. Will later replaced though by the 250 half tech version of the armored car. And it sounds like basically they'd start using the 250 chassis instead because it was better off road than the 2 to 2, which with only four wheels did not have great performance off roads, which for reconnaissance vehicles. It's kind of important they can actually be off the road. So they replaced them all with larger armored cars like the 8 wheel, but again, the case of the 2 2 was specifically replaced by, you know, a 250 half track chassis armored car version. So, little fun fact there. Even more fun fact is they'd also eventually make a armored car based off the 251 half track, which was like, you know, kind of big in comparison. Which I think is more an indicator of the Germans were starting to get a bit desperate. Medics on the way there, though, for a lazy rent to provide some healing for Skandias. Armored cars heading out. I note the various half tracked armored cars there were using the same gun and turret effectively, though. Section, they've been caught by the armored car in the east and the west side. Push for the fuel pool there again. Ungraven striking for the British Empire here with his assault sections. Spearheading the assault against the Huns. Eastern fuel pool is now opening for another push there from a lazy rent. And we got the six point of gun here, Van Gaven. Not quite close to be able to the half check if that is what he's planning. Salt section pushing forward here, mine down there as well. Lewis there dropped dead like a sack of potatoes outside London. MD42 arm car catching the assault section out, and here we've got four kills, veteran one, and there you go, forced retreat in the face of the German Reich. Six pounder gun wing, and there you go, gunners numbering up the east side over here. Got Angram men almost in position, ready to withstand this German assault. And with two bolted sections versus two upgraded Gundy escorts, the odds are not looking great here for Laser End, to put it generously. In the far west, we've also got the film being hit by the Sappers. Mines was about. A lot of action now on the both edges of the map here between a Laser and an Angreifen. Rifling it off here, but dodge nicely. Ooh, oh, sneaky there, very sneaky. Hits a mine though, but almost got the section in a turn though. That was a pretty sneaky one. Bases without the gunners, and then have them rav grenade the opposite squads. That was kind of neat. There we go, though. Grenades up. The Mills bomb, the number 36 M. That was also the number 69 grenade, which was a well, light anti infantry grenade there, which they'd use later in the war. This was known as a percussive grenade, meaning a detonate on impact as well. Similar to the Gammon Bombs, which in the game are not shown as Picasso, but you know, a little fun fact there. Pushed off the Eastern Fuel Pond fun here. Lace when going there for the fuel economy of Angraven and the British Empire. Enforcing healing at back at base. Besides the bolts and the grenades, there's not much else here. He could consider taking up soon and could now go for the half track, but timing wise, he might be at that spot where it might just be better not to bother. And again, it could also. Effectively, I'm to push back then at Laser Ren and maybe like make it hard for Laser Ren to, you know, pull ahead on tanks faster. So there's obviously a few arguments there for and against. And before to Parnisi, also the Minesweep was obviously noticed here. And kind of laying down mines a bunch. We do get the half track out here, the M5. Can be upgraded with the Corp Mount. He could also just use it to mechanize his infantry, which I think also has his merits. Does tend to get overlooked. And there you go, Corp Mount. And again, incredibly good upgrade. So. Not really a surprise he's going to go for it, but there's definitely a part of me that would like to be just, you know, again, mechanize his infantry, if you will. Plenty of gunners, the sappers there, quickly cutting down Hammond. Pack 40 there for Lacey Wren. 
He pans out the Kanoni Fierce. Sensible addition against the British. There we go. Half trick unleashing hell upon laser and Grenadiers. Who's setting out? He could soon consider taking out himself, though obviously it's going to be some time for him then go for armor. But otherwise, I think Laser has got pretty good map control right now. This is Angarvan. Despite Angarvan and a good amount of infantry upgraded and everything, he's not quite leveraging it fully, it seems. Of course, we'll have to see if the Corp Mark may not be able to alleviate that particular issue. Black machines away here for Laser and Gundy's almost got old squads equipped now. Also worth noting, Laser End though still hasn't picked a command a bit over 10 minutes of the game and he still has yet to make a decision there. Could mean speared here or mechanized. We'll have to see. Gun is pursuing the half tech here. And suppress there pretty harshly. Western fuel point victory point quite open, slowly moving forward. He's clearly not willing to overcome it there. Concerned about things that might be hiding. You see Angram position are crumbling away there. As Laser End brings his pack to bear to deal with British sandbags and other nasty things like half tracks. There you go, getting caught up position is pretty bad for the half track here. The only way this can if Angarn had been a lot more aggressive, he could have probably run down the pack, folding clear to that amount of moments. And now Laser End is going for a second armored car. Now that is an interesting choice here, considering like timings and everything. Like, I'm not saying double two twos is bad, in fact, it can be quite good at the right time. And if you've, you've got a player who can handle it. But I feel like the timing for this second armored car, on the other hand, is a bit peculiar. Like, I feel like this is a bit late. Like, we're talking almost 12 minutes of the game. They're now going for a second armored car. Not a huge fan of that one. Oh, grinning an info two gets wiped there. Can't grab it, but in a sense, it just, you know, still depletes an infant squad nearby and effectively wipes the veterans, really, so... That still does some good there for Angrive and over Laser End. But there you go. Second 2 to 2 has arrived. So that's double armored cars. Can do fellow with the half track. Of course, there might be a reason he went for the second one just to counter that half track hard and also down some infantry. Then D is obviously. Oh, dear. That's another white peer on Lazy Ren in a matter of moments. Quite painful there, but great for Angrive and the British Empire here. Six point lines are great in the 2 to 2. There's only two 2-2s two -two pursuing, which I would say a weakened score can also have a fairly good chance of getting wipes again. It's not like two 2-2s two -two in general are bad, but I'm just slightly questioning the timing of this. In particular, since Ungar in this pace is going to be soon up with a tank here, and Laser Ring just went for a second armored car. Again, the timing here, I would say, with the double armored car is fairly questionable for Laser Ring. Fairly questionable in my book. We'll have to see, though. Using the pack to wreck sandbags. Fuel on the West also been re rendered British. He's definitely feeling the pressure here, though, from Angarv and the British. But he's also doing his best to try and apply some pressure to Angarv in return here. A, point is being a lot of uh, things going across the entire battlefield. Angarv is meaning preparing for the main push into the Western Cemetery here. Will Lacey Ren be able to deal with this? Can he stop this British assault upon the Nice borders. Who knows? In these side, the machine gun or sap packs and riding down with the sappers. There's a machine gun here, though. They got the assault section there. Ryan, they're going to see with some well placed shots. And the west side of the assault's going up. It looks like he's planning a flank attack to the east rather than. Huh. Yes, he had one plan and decided against it. Either way, that makes it easier, though, for laser and tank to deal with the half track now because now it's been isolated. It's not even close to, say, the anti tank. And see if the rest of We have both armored cars ready. He could, like, Rushed it down and destroyed it, but fortunately for Angarven, Lazy Ren was not in such a position to deal with that. Finally taking up there though, Angarven nearby could have gone for Chrome by now or Centaur. Both of those I think are quite powerful. He could of course also go for the M10, but I'd say there's less of a pressing need for that one. It's also not impossible, he's going straight for Anvil. It's likely a Churchill tank here from Angarven. And Section in the center sent packing in the west here. Half tech still about six pound gun being caught by the grenadiers trying to end it with their machine guns, but they fall a bit short there. Machine and gear sitting up there. Armored car moving towards the center. Now the mills bomb. Let's 
Okay, from the sixth one in the armored car. And another pioneer squad here for Lee's Ren. I'd say that's very sensible, though. We're slowly approaching the trend minute mark, and Lee's Ren has still yet to commit to a commander. And feels more like mechanized or spearhead here. Finally building in support McCall as well. So good. Mines with kits there. Helps with, of course, A spotting mines, but also help repair the tanks fast. And these side, a few pump once being hit there by Lee's Ren's gonna is. My god, what happened here? It's almost like it's been a war! You're going to be iron the war! Oh, right, yeah, I keep forgetting! Mines down there, nice spot. Half tech swing eastwards, there we got the pack. Sword already, but an assault section appears. Odds already with the Germans. It's been caught here by the half tech, quickly bowed down. No mercy, there we go, pushed off these and fuel point as more British infantry arrives. And Laser End's Eastern situation that he's just looking deplorable. In the west side, we're also going to push him to the cemetery here. And Laser End is now primarily in his base, actually. Like, he needs to like, swing back hard here at Ungarden fast before Ungarden just seizes most of the map. It's quite clear at this point that Ungarden thinks plan is to just go for the Churchill tank here. I mean, for us, Laser Rain doesn't quite have any indicators because I, I don't think Ungarden's a big Brit player. But also, too, there's not really for now a lot of like science he's gone for it. Like, He's yet to upgrade the sappers with some of the heavy engineer upgrade. And of all there for Laserin and for Deutschland, the Panzerkampfwagenfeuer. And we got the second six pan gun out here for Ungarn, ready to meet the German tanks head on. Not the best position to be in there. No cover versus unit heavy cover, even with an MU 42. That's a pretty bad situation to be in for the crew there. Another push here, but there we go, met with the British. I think Laser Ren might want to focus more on the west for now. Or the east, right now, he's, I think, splitting up his attention too much, which means he's not really effectively moving into either position. Looks like there is a slightly larger commitment now towards the west side here into the cemetery. But still some forces running around to circus here with the You can now uh, go for the church and kill. Whoops, that was a bit of a jump there. I'll church your Mark 7 infantry tank. Half track room to the Gunners of the Pioneers. Those six pounder guns are going to be a real problem here for Laser Ren if he's not careful with those armored cars for that matter, the Panther 4. Six pounder being pursued by Gunners, the armored cart got the pack forward as well. Now we got the Panther 4 time for another angle here. Ungarb name might have slightly awkwardly maneuvered his six pounder guns lying here. Laser Ren a good chance at least wipe them. Might even be able to just destroy one of them here. And we're pushing the half to get an overdrive there on the way there. Flying way there at this six pounder gun with a pack 40. Armor car knocked out a small one there for Ungarb. No laser end here. Gunny squad clipping right up at the assault section, pushing forwards. There we go. White fast on the pack 40. Panther fast on the half track. Panther moving in. Then gain the section to try to grab the six pounder gun here. Lacking machine gun there. Can't need to deal with it. Note he's holding it to a fire. Not to go its position there to the six pounder gun unwillingly. A manion. And this shoots misses, but there it goes. Second shot that goes through in the east side. Their points being grabbed here for the German right here. As Ungarden's assault in the west is quickly bogged down there due to Laser Ren's push. There. Back here we got another gun to for Laser Ren. Nothing further happening there. Back at base for Ungarden. We finally get the church tank on the way here to deal with Laser Ren. Head on. It's going to be quite a challenge there for Laser Ren to deal with. Grab the Eastern Victory Point here. We got 377 versus 377. A capture point is being overrun. Western points there being grabbed. Fuel point falling to the British. Eastside here we got gunners in the section. Quick rough grenade off. But it's nice and dodge there by Ungarven. Laser in as we are very close to the training mark. Still hasn't picked a commander. Again, either Spear or Mechanist. It could theoretically still be Jaeger Infantry, but that seems at this stage highly unlikely. Though highly unlikely doesn't mean impossible. Church Hang rolling forward to see. I imagine you'll be adding the tank commander already. Yes, indeed. He said Yaman can't go for the sake of the Eastern Field Point. Will be interesting to see how he reacts to this Churchill tank once he actually you know, gets into contact with it. 
You also got the sap sap equipped with the heavy sap upgrade. So by now though, you should have an idea that if he's paying attention that I'm going go for Anvil. Of course might mean a Churchill tank then. After the pun he's has got the six pun guys moving forward as well here. Churchill tank continues to roll ahead. They're going to gain the Pioneers for the center from the cannon. Pax falling back here as well as Angan keeps up the assault team with his Churchill tank. Flying at the pack 40 misses. Panda 4 nearby as well. Still with the single pack 40. Panda 4 is going to be tough here to deal with the Churchill tank. Second pack they're arriving. Could catch the Churchill and then the crossfire between the two. There we go. One shot goes through but the other bounces off the Churchill tank's thick frontal armor. Which was, I think, roughly in the vicinity of 152 millimeters thick. So it was a pretty heavily armored tank. Sappers on the way there, though, for Ungriven that repair his Churchill tank. But only one sapper squad, even like five man with the heavy sap upgrade. It's going to take a bit of while to think two of them will ensure he can actually fix up his tanks pretty rapidly, even his Churchill tanks. And in the center, Pantaforps the section there. Tearing into them out in the open there. They're trying to lay down some sandbags, but they're paying a high price for this attempt. We finally got a command from later in. It actually is Jaeger Infantry. I can only imagine he's going for it simply for the Stugan to tank strafe versus the Churchill tank, which indicates he's clearly taking the Churchill tank seriously in a sense. So there we are. Does mean the rest of the commander may just not see any usage, which is, you know, a bit boring. You could also go for the Jaeger Command Squad, which is going to give another squad here, which I think would be a bit fairly efficient versus the enemy infantry. We of course have to see what laser and actually does besides I imagine use the anti-tank strafe. Ungarn 6 Panagar has been pulled up towards the center to help deal with the German push through there on the west side. MD42 ripping apart the section at point blank range. Already two men dead there in the dirt. Church and tank seeing its sappers being snapped out there. The center is pushing straight for the 6 Panagar over there. You go. Half tech quickly puts a stop to that. And so laser and is not further to explode. We got artillery strike called in there. The light in front like your shots. Pack 45 and a half track, and there we go, direct hit on the six pound gun cruise, getting some light damage in, no kills on the cruise it seems. Pretty lucky there for Undiven. Pretty lucky, and obviously, in return, not particularly lucky for Lazy Ren, who's splitting resources. Guessing, yeah, it's going to be tier 4 here, and possibly even a Panther to try and tackle the Churchill tanks for that. Things being snapped there by the Churchill tank. Uh, Kitchen reinforcing healing. We've got the heavy pants got there for Lazy Ren and the British. Oh, not for Lazy Ren, the British, but the Germans. The Reich. The Southie, a massive push here by Angraven. Church Tank bang up several squads of infantry and, the, of course, the heavy sappers. And with nothing to really hold back, this British tide he is quickly forced to fall back here. Church Tank continues to advance here. Center, we got the armor card in the assault section there near ace level here at Fangraven. Got the church and fort smoke down there, very nice. And the east side of the assault pushes forward to it, right into the M42 team and some these packs blasting away there. Heavy pants going up for laser end in his base. Armor card going for the exposed western section. There's just a lot of engagement going on here. Matt, roughly 50 50 foot here between the two so far. A slight lead in terms of control, they actually two ungun for now. Victory points wise, though, he is a bit behind Laser Ren. Salt section chunk to Lindy is here, and there you go. Churching hits a telemine, damn its engine. Smoke involving the inner compartment. Packs are flying away, they're causing further damage to the Churchill tank. White Foster, they're being deployed to be the salt section, forcing away the packs. It does have a thing potentially to allow Ungraven to escape with the Churchill tank before Laser Ren can move to finish off here. Panther on the way there for Laser Ren and the ninth Panzer to be shown here. Panzer Kampfwagen 5. Mines it off there. Need to fix up the Churchill rapidly. And again, two heavy sapper sections there can definitely get repaired pretty swiftly here. So. The up window opportunity for Laser Ren to really exploit this telemine is swiftly closing here. And yeah, he's not going to be able to think, you know, take out the church tank. He's just moving in too slowly to deal with it. A capture point is being overrun. 
Swift advance in the center. Victor Bonnie side. Morgan is packed forward. Up east side here. The kind of the section there are standing off against the other. The Panther is right around the corner there for Laser Ant. Panther forming four bits. Veterans one there. Oh, mine went off there, killing another poor sap. In the center of the section being caught here on the flank of the info two. Actually, he's managed to suppress it. That's pretty lucky there for Laser Ran. His Panther is also now on the field here. The Panzerkampf Wagen 5 as Führung R, which was the second model of the Panther. The models for the Panther basically went D, A, and then G. That was technically sort of also model F, but they never really saw like any series numbers like, and never like, in actually like in one full piece, like some Panther F holes with model G turrets. She saw some fighting around Berlin, but that's about it. Chow Tank Bombardi in the center, got six point guns being hammered by artillery. Being snapped at. These side guns being tapped with the two south section, Chow Tank being east first as well. And the west, the assault section pulls ahead here. <coughs> Panther shoots waves, Panther heading eastwards, adding the Panther MG42 here. Armor can't get in the assault section. 12 kills the Vetchi Fu. Flee, and there we go. Routed. Telemancer from Laser End. Very good by way of mining with them. So, Panther's got his machine gun halfway done. Firefly on the way, the front gun support. Here's Churchill tank versus German heavy armor. Interesting enough, we're not seeing any M10s here. I guess he prefers the range. Of course, he also has the strafing support, which could really give Laser End a very bad time of it. He's up getting the armor covers the Sapper Sea. Check to tank as once we'll here for the British Empire. Fireflower, roughly halfway done here for Unguy for now. And the first Canadian Infantry Division. Panther and Fortress for the Church Tank. Great shot there, punching right through the front armor. You can get some pack shots through there. Church Tank returns the favor to the Panther. In the west side, a bit of probing it, and so in the center. But Lace Ranch Panda 4 puts a stop to that. Both sides are getting also a bit more cautious now. We're not seeing so much aggression there. And crucially, not a lot of maneuvering either. Like, for some of the left side, he's actually, I think, quite open. But Ungarb's now so focused on just keeping Lace Ranch locked down. And he's just, I think, ignoring some good opportunities to harass uh, Lace Ranch's economy. Whereas Laser End, I think, is doing more of a job to actually hit Ungarb's economy in return here. So, in some regards, Laser End definitely feels like he's the one that has the initiative. And he's also, I think, more willing to explore it. Whereas Ungarb is playing it a lot more, well, again, hesitant, I feel like, in one way to put it. Or at least cautiously. Got the Firefly the ready with a 17th pounder gun. Which the British would look to mount on a lot of things, including the M10 Achilles. Nope, by the way, Killers applies to both the one with the 3 inch gun and the 17 pounder gun. Nice little smoke grenades moved on the center victory point. Thumbs up there. Panda 4, though, knows exactly where to shoot and gets two men killed. Very good. East side, he could see some grenades in the second DC. Some Mills bombs. After rushing in, 14 kills. In the center of the Ungarve and finding his little attempt there, thwarted here by Laser Rent. And the church thing with swords there, five kills, Retton's one there. Blazing away there at the Germans with machine guns and main guns. Going to sing heavy losses, far flying here as well. We got the Panther going in. Panther there for Laser Rent, helping you with the British anti tanks. There you go, the Panther 4 is rendered into burning scrap metal here in a matter of moments by the six pounder guns and the Firefly. A stinging blow there to Laser Rent and the German Reich in the east side, armor covers the section there. We will continue to push here. Note, oh, we do have target weak point. There we go. Firing out at the church tank, starting up. Here we got an anti-tank safe as well here. This could turn pretty expensive. We have one guy from almost got the church tank here. And, oh, man, it's nearly evaded, but he does destroy the anti-tank. No, with us, I suppose. And now we got one guy from leashing the might of the Luf, of the British Air Force. They're on Laser Ren, the RAF. Strafing support. And Laser Ren doesn't have an Osman. He's got most like the armored car and the pinwheel machine and the Panther, so he's not exactly heavily equipped for dealing with British Air Forces. Another six pounder gun there for Un Ivan to replace the one lost to the German Luftwaffe. 
been more checked on this meat. We've seen some pretty prioritized repairs here from the sappers. Five flowers and your repairs. Half tank, pretty good to go there. Six pounder anti tank gun finished. So, what will Laserman go for next? Having lost the Panda 4, we of course got that Panzer Air at the ready. Churches getting ready on the west side, then another push into the cemetery. But looks but here from ungovernment again, much more cautious in pace. But clearly hesitant to extend too fast. They're going east side, half to to defend the fuel point against the Germans. Note the way he's moving about there. He takes a slightly longer, more circuitous route, but also one that can quickly use to dive behind the terrain here to hide from any anti tank guns and whatnot. And of course, also just avoids like further exposing itself while moving to the point. So I think this is a pretty smart move there by Ungovernment. Definitely the safest. Obviously, it takes a bit more time, but I'd say it's a rule much smarter there. Hunter for waiting here for its target to arrive in the west side. The armored car dashing out the section. Do manage to enter the point neutral there. We got 3 and 50 to 23 in the east side there. Churchill tank pushing back the gun. Do you see? Double packs though with ease, punching through the Churchill tank's side armor. Armored coming towards the center here. We actually got a Jaeger command squad not here for laser and replacing some of his infantry losses finally. Exactly sounds like make fair amount of use of the commander in a sense, though I don't think we've seen any ambush camouflage, but we got like, you know, the Light like, Barrage, the Strafe, and the Jaeger Command Squad. So pack shots there fight at the church end though. Some fail to penetrate though. More goes through in the end though. And there you go, Panzer the Barrage on the six pounder gun, and just none of the shots hit. They all miss in a most spectacular manner. That's got to feel bad there for Laser Rent. So many rockets, and just none of them proceed to fucking hit. He's being about to, you know, ambush camouflage there from Laser Rent. Firefly remains at the ready. Center there. Panther ever reloading. Armored car fixed up. Panther just turning back here for laser end. Not waiting to commit that one and lose it like he lost the Panzer four. He said he got the section charge with the gun DC. Need to be careful with them. Route it. In some cases, they got a nice white phosphor going off here in the center of the east of the church tank. Can do clash with the pack 40. No target weak point. There you go. Church tank that gets out of the arc refine the center of the firefly. Dealing with the armored car. Perhaps overkill, but you know, there is no such kill. I can overkill. In the east side, they're going to the section. They're moving forward there for the British Empire. Clash from the gun is out in the open. Honestly, at this point, part of me feel like you might want to consider some Bren guns as well, but he was constantly setting up the same supports. It obviously doesn't leave him much room for it now. That makes it interesting then went for grenades, he was gonna like go for this one. Because again, like the grenades are more constant source of munitions usage, whereas again, like, you know, the Bren guns are like pretty definite. And find with the advancing section. Got the far flaming forward seat. Good shot for the side armor there. Church is saying the virus virtually two with 12 kills here for Ungarden. Sandbags being wrecked here with the pack 40. Nowhere for those Englishmen to hide behind. Hans of Air for Israel to try again here for Laser Run and the German Reich. And the Panther ever this time strike two at the Englishmen. What it would once would be another whiff barrage. Another push up, and again, there's just not a lot of action on the west side. I feel like, again, like, Angam de Degree's gone too defensive. I mean, partly, again, with the church saying there's obviously limits how, like, you know, aggressive you could get in terms of, like, mobility, but even then, I feel like he's just, you know, perhaps seeing a bit too cash in some ways. Sam's been caught with the Panther this time around, actually lands a wipe here. Great there for Laser Man's Panther for crew. That's great for Angam's men who got utterly smashed into orbit. In the west side, we do get a flank here from Ungarvni with the assault section pushing in with the Sten guns and the Thompsons ripping through here. Laser range machine crew there almost wiping out the entire thing before they're finally repulsed. East side here, few point is once being attacked by Laser range as Laser range compared to Ungarvni keeps up a bit of momentum though. That said, it's not all perfect. He could also be more active on the west side. 
there you go, almost got the Chichen, and there you go, that's a huge blow to Ungov near and the British Empire, but there you go, Panther Corp with a Firefly and six pointing guns, straight from in there, and it's a bit of a situation, a little mess here, as, oh, he actually should have called him from the other angle, honestly, but all the way, though, that's the strike comes from the six pointing guns, didn't hit anything with that little of a strike, though, And the six pointer guns kind of escaped there as well. He should have attacked in from the other angle, rather from the north. That's obviously like the father's path there, versus the other one. If he attacked from the south half of the map there, it would have been more likely for the you know, staging run to hit in time. But oh, we got the half track though. Small win there. Panda 4 there for Laser End. And Ungarden is not just down to well, the Firefly in terms of like any kind of thing resembling armor, even remotely. We got Fiona Fernandez on 61, Ungarden situation definitely looking, I think, a bit more concerning. He's lacking, I think, a bit more momentum here now. And I think, again, he's like switch up his tactics. He's like to look to outmaneuver here, laser end, to try and attack from an angle where he's not ready. Now that Panzer for Barrage off him, you can see the laser end's men are just running as fast as little legs can carry them. Firefly, good to go here. Got another strafing support loaded up here for Ungar from now the British Empire versus Lacey Wren. Sappers on the move again here, advancing through the broken wasteland in the center to grab the center victory point here. And just no action on the left side here. Right into the M42 team is trying to clear it head on, but it's just not working out there for Ungar and Sappers at all here. They're already suppressed by the ace of the M42 there and will have to retreat here before the risk getting wiped out. Panda 4 is right around the corner of Laser End, but he's got too many units out to get it done. Falling a bit back in, he's got the section with the advance of them deers. Bit of a ceiling gate because he can no one to come. We got a strafing support called in on this massive grenadier infantry blow up there. Or falls, I don't know. Feels a bit of waste, honestly, by uh, Ungarven. Doesn't really feel like it's a decisive engagement. It wants to like, spend 200 munitions on that. So, either I think he made a miscalculation. He just really does not want to like deal with that infantry at the moment. Do get some rocket strafes. Actually managed to hit the armor car and the panther nearby. That's kind of lucky there for Ungarven that happened. But there you go. Some luck down from the armored car and the moving about aircraft here. But he's been caught here with the RF. Almost got a wipe there. And one of Laser Rent's going to be escorted there. Osman now instead of the Panther 4 here. Makes a lot of sense there, to be honest. To help deal with the strafing supports. As there's likely there will be more as the match continues to go on there. Meanwhile, second Churchill tank right around the corner here for Ungarven. And the first Canadian infantry versus the German 9th Panzer, to be sure. More aircraft being downed here by Deutschland. Another straight around here, catches some of the German infantry, some unpacking. Got the flak panzer now ready to serve Deutschland. Machine them being flanked in the west side, another push for the cemetery there, clearing out the mines, which has been, has been you know, laid down in the Belize Running's Pioneers. Firefly there, closing in on Metri 2 here, no tulip rockets. Again, I imagine he's just focusing everything on safety support. He's been caught with the Churchill tank. Pack though. Easily punching through. We got both ace level now, which means they're a good rate of fire and good penetration. I mean, the Churchill tank is actually in a really bad position as those. In the west, though, Osman moves to this here against the British attempt to grab the western victory point here, and of course the cemetery. And that support there, they are just forced to retreat. Again, I'm going to feel like it's over focusing in the center here rather than putting more pressure on the left flank or even the east flank. So. I don't feel there's a bit of case of tunnel vision from Ungarden versus Laser End, and that is definitely, I think, aiding Laser End here significantly versus Ungarden. Osman, this thing hits from the six pound guns, almost got it already knocked out. Close call here, but no, narrowly escapes. Panther pushing up eastwards, one kill, Redson's one. Section of the being slaughtered here out in the open. Panthers taking some hits from the six pound guns, the armor giving way here to British munitions, and there you go, Tillis Strike on the six pound guns, pushing them back. Lost section here for. Ungarven in the face of Laser End here. We got 322 versus 116. Starting to look really bad here for Ungarven. But whatever advantage he had seems to have largely vanished in his hands. He seems a bit unable to, shall we say, regain the spark he had earlier in the match here versus Laser End. 
Nice and Neymar again is just much more deadly keeping up pressure though. I would still argue he could be doing more on the far west side here as well. Grab some points there away from Angrav and Glute denying more resources. So small critique there, but still think overall laser and as, as the match gone on, overall just handling better here on the battlefield with a bit better overall tactical handling. Another half to Gadi Fangraf and another court mount there. Yeah, Kamal's got the launching an ambush there. Do we, if we even have the ambush on the machine gun there. That actually means the only thing he needs to do is look for full bingo is actually equip some of the G33s. That he doesn't really have like any units he can do that with at the moment. I doubt he's gonna build like a Gundia squad or Panzer Gundia squad for that purpose, but if he were, he could go for bingo. Panzer the Barrage there completely just missing all of the marks. There's just nothing in the vicinity in the first place. A bit of a whiffed barrage to put it gently. There you go. Finding some more action on the west side here. Angarvan just pouring into the gap made in the east here. Bailey's are in. Looking to, you know, fill it up again. Enemy threatening a capture point. 122 versus 81. Really looking bad here for Angarvan. Needs to be, I think, a significant change in tax. There needs to be more aggression. There needs to be more drive. But, uh... So far, Angam continues to handle this very cautiously. More salt section would helpful. Also, an officer earlier, I think it was been a very nice addition for him, considering what he was doing there. But at this point, it just seems like he's kind of lost steam here. Maybe he can somehow regain some here versus later in. Maybe. In the west side here, check short tank backing up to a sample section there. Finally, got a push into the west side here. Finally, looking at things to break new ground here. There's the Germans on each side of the section that's been caught here by a lot of German firepower. The Ospin, the Gundis, the command squad, MD4 to catch the 6 pound guns in the open. Could actually score some wipes in there. We go. One gun crew there is about to get exterminated here by laser end, but no. Retreating infantry section draws with the attention of the 6 pound guns. And the west side, Church England forwards here for King and Country. Diving right into laser end's flanking, getting the infantry 2 crew there. Target weak point there on the Church got smoke deployed there. Allowing it to escape here. Kiki move then the east side going for the eastern fuel point. We've got the half of the command squad there. Between Trent Tuzer 59, got the Panther, the Osprey, got the center here. Straight here for the far flight, looks like they go direct hit here. Far flight gets the first shot, Osprey up as well here. Six pound guns are there ready. We've got between 22 versus 54. West side here, Church now falling back towards and they're responding by can attacking. Sword into the flank, but there you go. Packs there, preventing exactly that from happening with any ease. And the church tank is down to half health already again. The eight packs, 40s are just absolutely wrecking Ungarden's armor there. Again, their high rate of fire combined with high penetration, meaning the church tank is just a really, really big but easy target for the anti tank gunners. East side, they have to go for the yeah, command squad, but Eastern Victory Point pushes them off there with some ease. We've already got their laser in this panther looking to silence the half track. Pulling up with the panther come flying terms, one kill there, shoots but misses. Small bit of relief there from Gum's half track. Got the flag panther up with the pack forwards and the sandbags there. Crumble! And now we got the firefly on the scene here. 17 kills. Actually, 17. Betsy, two of them looking at another unit, actually, for some reason. Can't remember which one I was looking at, but. Oh well. Random, as they say. What Jim was thinking about there, man? That was quite the brain fart there, honestly. Quite the brain fart. Oh well, doesn't matter. No kills on that firefly, actually. 20 points left here. Being really rough there, Van Garden. Being really rough. Picks up the church of tanky. Troops are pressed to the half track. Three kills. Close 22. Pack four sitting up here. Great shot there. Right through the front line of the half track there. Leaving the crew, well, not having a great time. That's for sure. Ten points left here. Looking more or less like GG now for Ungarven. Looking like GG. Got eight points left. Six points left. Church of tanky again. Four kills. Of points left. Half track knocked out. Two points, and I think yeah, that is GG game over here. A loss for Ungarn victory for Laser in a big, nice back and back fourth match. But in the end though, Ungarn I think got too passive. He got too I think, uh, well too linear in a sense. Like he just kept focusing on these two points. He suffered from tunnelation. He 
field I think to outmaneuver his opponent. Part of the case I think just his focus on these Churchill tanks, which again aren't quite, you know, great at the sort of stuff he's doing, but then he should have, I think, committed to more Churchill tanks run, just relying on one, so we could actually like make some big pushes ahead there. Another issue I think was just the lack of artillery from Ungreifen. Alongside, I think this more static defensive play, which really just, I think, conceded a lot of ground and initiative to Laser Ren, allowing Laser Ren to dominate the fires of one dawn. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. I learned something from it. If you did subscribe, like, share, comment on it, consider donating on Patreon page as well. Links in the description. This is Imperial Links and Cheers. Thank you. Watch your episode tomorrow again for our last episode. Bye.